Welcome to another Excel Athlete Fitness video. Today we're going to look at two different things. One of them is a few different functions and the second one is to revisit some data validation and to do something really cool with it and that is uh, draw a graph and, and allow you to change the input. The scenario that I'm going to use to, to go through these examples is a repeat sprint test. Very common with team sport athletes. I've got four athletes where they've performed a test where there is eight sprints of a, in this case, 2020 shuttle. So I've put some example times in there and we're just going to go through completing this analysis using a few functions. I've listed the functions down underneath, as you can see here, but I'll take you through the, the processes. So the first thing to look at is total time. Pretty simple. I like to just type my functions. In this case, I'd type equals sum, and then I would select the cells that I wanted to sum, close brackets, and enter. Another way that I could do it is to use the function wizard. If I click this FX button up here, you can see sum is already listed down here as to one of the functions, but if it wasn't, I could just type it. click OK and it brings up a wizard. What it's asking me for is what numbers do I want to sum. It's already selected what I want up here but I'm going to delete that. Click OK. So two different ways, one using the wizard, one just typing it in. If I click on this little square on the corner of the cell and pull it down, it will copy down, <coughs> excuse me, the formula. I'm going to do the same thing, equals average if I want to quickly format these to times up on the, t on the taskbar here you can see increase or decrease decimal I'm just going to decrease it down Next one, the best time in this case is the smallest time. So the function to do that is called min equals min So they're the easy ones. These ones start to get a little bit more complicated. A very common way to express a performance during a repeat sprint test is to use something called a fatigue index. What this is, is to say, well, how much slower did you get between the first and the eighth rep? And what is that as a percentage? So let's try and figure that out. We've already calculated what the best time is. So we need to do the same thing to calculate what the worst time is. So I'm going to do that now. Equals max. So that's not our answer. That's just the max time. But I'm going to keep working on this formula by subtracting what the best time is. So this tells us that the athlete A, John, only fatigued by 0.87 seconds between the best and the worst time. And if we want to find out what this is as a percentage, we just have to remember some of our school time mathematics. I want to put a bracket around this entire thing. And if I hit enter, we'll see that this doesn't change the result at all. If I edit it again, what I want to do is divide it by the minimum time. Once 
once again we get a number that's formatted not quite how we would like it and there's a couple of things we could do something simple is just to click on the percent button up here or we could have done something within the formula to multiply it by 100 using the percent number is always a good idea because that way Excel understands what you've uh, what you've set the, the cell to look like so fatigue index now here's something that I definitely like to use with my athletes and that is the, the perfect decay so if we assume that they ran all eight repetitions at their fastest possible speed and didn't fatigue at all that would be their perfect time so if you look at athlete one their best time was 6.24 so their perfect time would equal equals minimum times 8 so this is their perfect time what we want to find out is what is the difference between what the athlete actually got and the perfect time so if I edit this formula equals total time then we'll get that perfect decay I like leaving that as it is some people like converting that to a percentage of uh, total time or perfect time but I like leaving just as 2.45 because that tells me how many seconds they got slower so there we are I've done some basic analysis of these athletes what you'll find is that when when you conduct repeat sprint testing <coughs> athletes are often not very clear about the outcome and as a consequence sometimes they don't perform the test as well as they should an example of this is athlete number two James now this athlete has not fatigued much at all but he also doesn't appear to have run as hard as he could because all these times are remarkably similar similarly athlete three Chris doesn't appear to have conducted the test particularly well either the reason I can tell this is because his last time was not his slowest now in theory an athlete should always become more fatigued with each repetition that they perform but sometimes particularly if the athletes know what the test is like they hold a little bit back so that they can finish strongly so I like to use a variety of different analysis tools to determine how someone has performed on a test like this total time best time perfect decay are the things that I like the most now I've listed all the different formulas down here below in case you're interested what I'm going to show now is a follow-up to video one where we did some data validation and I'm going to make this quite a useful way to quickly cast your eye over data so if you recall from data validation what we want to do is create a list of names so I'm going to select these athletes in the name box I'm going to type the word athletes next I'm going to go to cell A22 click data data validation list I then hit F3 and choose the word athletes I could have typed this in but it's always nice to, to use the inbuilt functions so now I can choose any one of my four athletes let's say James the next step is to use a function called VLOOKUP VLOOKUP definitely in the top 10 of Excel functions that you should know if you're working with data plenty of excellent applications what VLOOKUP does is it looks for a, a value in this case we're going to look for James it's going to look for it in this table and it's going to return what we want it to return so whatever's next to it in column 2 or in column 3 or in column 4 
it's going to return for us. So let's start making this function. equals VLOOKUP. You can see what appears is a little bit of help for you. So I want to look up whatever's in A22. Where do I want to look it up? I want to look it up in this table here. If I want to return the time for REP1, then that is column number 2 of the table. The final option in a VLOOKUP, almost always I use false, which is an exact match. That means if there was another athlete called Jamie, it's not going to return a value for that athlete. It wants to find an exact match. So it wants to find someone with James, not anything else. So I'm going to choose false, close brackets, and enter. And what we'll see here is it returns this value. And if I change it to, to Jake, it returns Jake's value. Now what I need to do is repeat this function all the way across. I'm going to use a little trick to, to do so. And we'll cover this a little bit later on. Firstly, I want to make sure that when I copy this formula that my ranges don't change and I put dollar signs in front of things and that keeps them exact and fixed. So instead of two here I'm going to use another little function which I'll talk about in a later video called columns. Columns counts how many columns between the start and end point of a reference. So if I use that function, what it will do is give me the same answer as before. Because basically what it's doing is saying that there are two columns between A and B. What you'll notice is that there is a dollar sign next to the A, so that's not going to change when I drag the formula, but the B is going to change. So let's show how that pans out. If I drag this across, This columns function now shows the number of columns between A and H. It's a really neat trick and it saves you a lot of time. Why I did this is because if I select that now, I can make a really simple column chart. And this is what I would call a well-conducted test. Every repetition is getting a little bit slower. And when doing tests like this, you can have a look at the trend of scores to see if it looks right or if there's something strange about it. So what you can see is really neat aspect of, of using data validation in this way is that you can make a drop-down chart that you can change or someone else who you've sent the spreadsheet to can change. There you go. A few more tricks. We revisited data validation. We tried a few functions out. The sum, max, min and average are relatively simple functions. The VLOOKUP takes a little bit more brain power. Very useful for you to become skilled at. The VLOOKUP has got plenty of power and application, so practice that one. There's some really good help and some really good videos on the web to check out if you really want to get a bit more skilled in the VLOOKUP. See you again next time.